Thank you for clicking on the video again. I uh, have an article here I want to share. I'm just going to read one paragraph from this article. It's on the blog, of course, here for today. Uh, just click there. And I'm just going to go down to this paragraph here. It says, an eyewitness to the incident told the Guardian newspaper, the well-spoken and calm preacher started reading from the Old Testament and told the carriage, Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk to you about something, and that something is the word of the Lord, Jesus Christ. He's here to heal your sins. The Bible tells you that homosexuality is a sin, and sex before marriage is a sin. You need to repent. Believe it or not, that is what got the people to fly into a panic and literally jump off the train and onto the tracks, no less. And why do you suppose that is? Well, look at how the media portrays Christianity nowadays. I'm not even going to touch on how they actually use the term Christian terrorist. Uh, about 10 years ago, they started using that. But everywhere you look, you see a Catholic priest being interviewed on camera regarding Christian topics, or someone making the literal inverted sign of the Catholic cross on their bodies right before they you know, go for the gusto in some televised sporting event, or some human interest story about how some dead Catholic saint supposedly helped some poor soul who prayed for a dying loved one. And so why? Why is that all a problem, you ask? Well, first and foremost, Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. But because the media claims it is, and the Pope claims to be a Christian leader, most people do, in fact, think the Catholic Church is a Christian church. But for the biblical facts that graphically declare otherwise, see my November 2000 Truth Provided newsletter on that when you get some time. But with that in mind, the frightened people on the train are also moved to recall to mind how the Islamic terrorists, who are not only promoted by the Pope and some U.S. presidents as a peaceful religion, the people with the ability to still think straight, no, it is not a peaceful religion when they see the news reports on terrorism and as well as the many graphic videos of Muslims torturing or beheading Christians. And then reality sets in, making them put two and two together regarding how Muslims are doing the exact same things to Christians as the Roman Catholic Vatican did to Christians during the Inquisition. Every act of torture, from the slow and torturous hands-on flesh-ripping act of beheading Christians to actually burning them alive comes to mind. And so as all that reality begins to boil up in the mind, when these train passengers suddenly hear a Christian preacher echoing Bible scripture, and because a prophecy declared in Luke 21, 26 has literally been fulfilled in their own hearts by now, most people are extremely fearful today. And so they can't help but to think that because he has a Bible in hand, claims to be a Christian, this preacher is a Roman Catholic whose history shows there is no difference between the Islamic terrorist of today and the crazed Vatican prelate of the Inquisition. So they naturally think the preacher with the Bible in hand is about to kill everybody on the train, just as the Muslims have been doing with their Quran in hand, who, by the way, were called brothers in the faith by the present Pope just two years ago. So, as also prophesied, Satan has used Roman Catholicism and Islam to generate just enough fear in the hearts of billions into thinking that anyone with a Bible is going to kill him. And by the way, Satan fears the Bible for a reason. He fears it more than anything else in the universe because he knows anyone reading it will actually find perfect peace in Jesus Christ and out him as the dying God he is. Better yet, all the fearful things we see today that are not only prophesied to happen, Satan knows the Word of God brings peace deep in the hearts of God's people, making them aware that no weapon formed against them can prosper. And with that peace, those obedient Christians can further expose his lies, and he loses even more souls from his damned trophy case. That all being said, what do you think is the better choice for you and your family at this point in the prophetic period of time? Ignoring the only book on earth that has been proven by billions to be the word of the living God so as to cower in fear at every turn from this day forward? Or opening that book to not only find that promised peace once you meet its author, but to see exactly how to prepare you and your family for what's about to happen next? I mean, after all, not only has the Bible been proven to be the word of God that brings peace and hope to its readers, it has also been confirmed by billions to be the only book on earth with documented prophetic facts 
that have been fulfilled to the letter for literally thousands of years all the way up to today. When we hear of the fear some people have in their hearts for a mere man preaching from that same blessed book on a train. Thank you for watching. God bless.